everyone. Welcome to Geo Institute's Meet the Artificial Intelligence and Data Science faculty session. Um, before we deep dive into today's session, I'd like to give a brief introduction about Geo Institute. So allow me to um, share my screen. Okay, so Geo Institute is um, founded on the personal pledge of Mr. and Mrs. Ambani, who both believe in the power of education and the power of holistic development. And when I say holistic development, um, they really believe in the power of youth, uh, the, the power of sports, uh, arts, culture, etc. And uh, they believe that together, this together can really um, help the youth of this particular nation and the world to uh, make this world a better place and solve its challenges. Mrs. Ambani is a teacher at heart and she believes that education is all about igniting the young minds and enabling them to attain their fullest potential. With this, we move to the vision of the Institute, which is that we want to be an exemplary Indian academic institution with global repute. We want to build a vibrant ecosystem for research, innovation, and entrepreneurship, be India's test bed for frontier research, prepare the next generation of leaders, significantly contribute to the advancement of the society and solve India's problem and solve them fast. We have a governing council, a global advisory council and an academic advisory council that help us with our program development, with our institutional development, as well as the enterprise development. We are led by our chancellor, Dr. R.A. Marshalper, who is the former director general of CSIR and has received the highest Indian civilian awards, which are the which is the Padma Vibhushan and Padma Bhushan. Dr. Deepak Jain is our Vice Chancellor, who's the former Dean of Kilok, And Dr. Ravi Chandran, uh, who's the former Otis Booth Leadership of Applied Science and Engineering at Caltech, is, is joining us as a founding provost. Uh, Geo Institute uh, is launching two postgraduate programs in, in its first year. Uh, the first one in Artificial Intelligence and Data Science and the other in Digital Media and Marketing Communications program. And in the subsequent years, we have planned courses in uh, journalism, sports management and public health, and also in new materials, life sciences, uh, et cetera. The two programs that we're launching this year, um, very briefly, I'm gonna talk about the highlights of this, and then I'll hand it over to Dr. Larry to talk more about the program and the curriculum and the faculty and career opportunities that are associated with it. So both the programs that we're talking and today we'll specifically talk about the artificial intelligence and data science program, uh, a one year full time on campus program uh, with the curriculum being benchmarked against top uh, global institutions as well as Indian institutions. Along with the curriculum, we have the holistic learning modules. We also have a study abroad module. Um, Geo Institute will be offering scholarships uh, to facilitate merit based admissions. We're a digitally enabled campus and in along with a comprehensive academic and career support, we will be offering a short placements as well. Before we dive into uh, the admissions part of uh, the presentation, I'd like to invite Dr. Larry to talk more about uh, the program, the curriculum, um, and how it was developed. Thank you very much, Rita. And I'm pleased to be joined uh, by uh, my colleague and friend, Shailesh Kumar, who has been my partner in developing this program at Geo Institute. Uh, this is an incredibly exciting time, obviously, for artificial intelligence and data science, which are uh, not completely identical, but very closely related disciplines involving many of the same technologies and some of the same aspirations. Uh, so uh, you just have to look around every day and you see incredible technical marvels being developed. But there are plenty more to be developed. In other words, the, the journey is not over and we have many Many, uh, many problems and challenges ahead of us to, to continue solving, uh, ranging from the applications of current technologies to the development of new technology in areas such as agriculture or retail, health, education, and so on, and also including the development of new technologies. So it is an exciting time and we're excited to be launching this program. Uh, I'm gonna let uh, Shailesh add a few words as well at this introduction, but let me just say a couple of things about our aspirations. Geo Institute is starting for, uh, I think, very sound practical reasons with a series of point master's level programs in areas such as AI and data science or digital media and marketing communications. Um, and I think that's a good way to grow a university which is ultimately aiming to be a full-fledged multidisciplinary university offering degrees from all levels through 
baccalaureate through PhDs and professional degrees. Um, starting this way, we can focus on building quality faculty and also on building the research DNA of the Institute. Uh, we don't intend this to be just a professional master's program. It's, it's or master's level program. It's aimed to be a, uh, a program where uh, the faculty and students are engaged in research and development efforts to do new things um, at all levels. And, uh, and to that end, we've actually uh, um, built a curriculum aimed at encouraging that and also invited faculty to join us um, who engage in these activities themselves uh, and who can teach by example for that kind of, for, for that kind of life of uh, both scholarly, entrepreneurial, and engineering activity. Um, I think there are three foundations that we're hoping to achieve in the curriculum for the program. First, depth. We want to make sure that you understand the fundamentals of AI and data science, and not just sufficiently to use the tools that are currently available, but to genuinely understand them and perhaps ultimately to become a tool builder yourself. Second, that you have breadth. In other words, that you can actually understand how to take these tools and put them into a larger organic system that will actually work with people and help them do to solve the problems that they're trying to solve. And to that end, um, in addition to the depth courses, and by the way, today we have two of the faculty who will be teaching these courses, um, and I should have mentioned them, Dr. Divya Khan, Los Angeles, who will be teaching respectively our courses in databases and data warehousing and in probability and statistics for AI and data science. And these are the kinds of foundational courses that will give you the, you know, the, the, the depth and understanding of the tools that you'll be using to be able to really use them properly and to be able to understand when, when they don't work and what to do about that. Um, but we're also gonna have a lot of breadth courses in areas such as design thinking, in areas such as human computer interaction, data visualization, so that we wanna make sure that you can actually build systems from end to end, not just kind of understand the technical components of those systems. Uh, and so the, the third set of courses really is finally putting that all together into projects. And so as soon as, as we can, by the third quarter at the very latest, we're gonna be, we're gonna be having projects courses and projects for you to engage in, team projects, individual projects, projects that are research projects, that are development projects that are aimed at building interesting and, and novel applications in all of the areas to which AI and data science apply. Um, and uh, and uh, I think that's really the part of the curriculum where it's all gonna come together for you in terms of understanding kind of what's the point of all that that you've learned up to that point. And so that, that's, really, that's really the foundations of the curriculum. Let me hand it off to Shailesh to say a bit more about the program and how we developed it and maybe the kinds of things we want students to be able to do when they get out. Um, um, uh, thank you, yeah. me too, and thank you, Shailesh. Yeah, thank you, Larry, for that very comprehensive overview. So just to add a little bit more on top, right? See, the, the why, the what, and the how, right? We need to understand all three. The why is very clear that, uh, you know, everybody's talking about AI, but nobody knows how to really institutionalize it into industries uh, as thoroughly as companies like Google's of the world have done. And there are many other verticals that it has to do. The last 20 years, we have learned a lot about how to build planet scale, you know, few API AI systems like search engines and uh, recommendation engines. But what we have not done yet is going to happen in the next 20 years, which is how to build AI ecosystems like a smart city built on AI or a telecom system built on AI or a retail ecosystem built on AI. We have not created such operating systems yet. Right, which include you know sensors, data, AI technology, delivery tools, uh, real time operations, everything happening together. So this next twenty years is going to be building true AI ecosystems around us in every vertical. Right? How do you run the agriculture of a country? How do you run the uh, you know healthcare of a country? How do you run the education system of a country? These are extremely massive problems, which we have not even ima started imagining, but they are all possible. So the, the next 20 years of AI is really going to be a very important thing. And that's the why that we want to prepare the next generation data scientists for. So how do you build systems as opposed to just build a model? How do you work backward from a problem statement then forward from a data set, right? These are the new skills that the next generation data scientists have to think about. 
and we have very carefully looked at the last 20 years and the next 20 years and kind of created a curriculum which is going to make future ready data scientists with world class faculty some of them are here today um, and you know when i looked at the curriculum objectively as a third person i really wished i i could enroll in this program and study from such amazing faculty so this is a great opportunity of a very futuristic program very holistic program theoretical hands on industrial research um, you know broad deep every which way you look at it it's a very comprehensive program and once you hear from the faculty, you will understand the kind of breadth and depth that uh, these faculties bring. They have really invented some of the core ideas in those areas. And that's the kind of faculty that is going to teach us. So, uh, you know, I will be attending as many classes as I can and learn from them. So I really invite all of you to think about this. So over to you, uh, Ritu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Larry. Thank you, Dr. Shailesh, for that. I think that gives a very comprehensive overview of the program. And now I think we'll deep dive into, into particular programs. We have with us Dr. Michele and Dr. Divya Khan that will be teaching uh, uh, here at Geo Institute. Um, so I'd like to invite Dr. Divya Khan to probably talk about uh, the course that he will be teaching here at Geo Institute. And what does he think? Um, how is that course going to help the students be future ready or upskill themselves? Maybe if I could ask Divya Khan to say a few words about himself before he starts that. Sure, of course, well. yes. And about his research, thanks. Uh, hi. So, from where I am, it's good. It's morning, but for probably most of you, it's a, it's an evening. So, good evening or good morning, whatever may be applicable. So, uh, I am on the faculty at Computer Science Department in the UC Santa Barbara, and my area of expertise has been databases, distributed systems, and uh, you know, more more recently, those things have transformed into big data and cloud computing. So that's what I have focused my my thirty plus years of research and and teaching here. And I I'm very excited to be uh, to be part of uh, the the geo endeavor. I think uh, uh, found find founding these new inst institutes who are who are going to tap into the 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 potential of of talent, human talent that exists in in the in those those parts of the world, is extremely important, and I'm really looking forward to be to be part of that. And I think uh, I'm I'm really I feel really fortunate to be to be to be part of this this uh, this endeavor. I I am going to be teaching a course on databases. So and data warehousing. So as as you know, for for both AI and machine machine learning and and data science, the kind of the core kind of com component that forms the foundation or the the lowest substrate is the data itself, right? So before we can start talking about answering questions and things like that, you have to have the the collect the, the data collection itself, and and that's that's I think is what we are going to be. To, to be talking about is, you know, as sort of in a, in a in a modern context, was what has happened in the last 20, 30 years, data has become the core currency of of, of most most organization, and and it really captures the the state of an enterprise, if you think if if you may, and and what we'll be looking at it as as what are the different ways of modeling and storing and retrieving this data. The, the various options that come about, uh, you know, in the in the modern times, since data has become extremely important, there is obviously traditionally that the model has been the relational data model, but they will also be looking at other models of un unstructured and structured data. And then once once uh, once we we understand how these 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 data can be modeled, stored, retrieved, you know, we then we'll start talking about. How do we manipulate and 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 when we have questions against this data that has been stored in these large large infrastructures, how do we go about processing that? And 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 so you know there is the interesting thing is there is uh, there is a declarative way of doing this in 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 the traditional database literature that is referred to as structured query languages SQL, and it enables you know, people with very, very limited programming expertise to be able to manipulate and answer 
kind of deep questions about data, which is, which is really to this date, whenever I see that, I find it very, very kind of interesting and, and very gratifying as to what computer scientists have created over the last 20, 30 years. So, so this, so, you know, and then we are going to go into the greater challenges of, of bigger enterprises like uh, enterprises at Google scale and how they are managing, you know, continuous stream of data that is, that gets dumped upon that, that, that arrives at the organization and what happens when the failures are encountered. So, so we'll, we'll get into some of these details. So I, that's, that's what my plan is. And I look forward to seeing you all. Thank you. Thank you for that, Dr. Agarwal. And uh, before we move to Dr. Michele, I'd like to uh, request all the participants to put in their Q question and answers in the Q&A tab um, so that after we uh, have a round of um, you know, introductions and descriptions of the course, we can then take in um, the participant Q&A. Uh, Dr. Michele, over to you. Yes, thank you. Well, I have to say that uh... Uh, it is a pleasure to be here. Uh, I have been amazed uh, by the breadth and vision that I've seen uh, put forward uh, into the organization of the GEO Institute, and I'm really happy uh, to be part uh, of this uh, adventure endeavor. Um, so, as mentioned before, I'm currently a professor in the Department of Statistics at uh, the University of California, Irvine. I'm going to join soon uh, University of California, Los Angeles. It's just an hour away, not uh, very far, in the Department of Biostatistics. In uh, uh, my own in, uh, research, uh, I am typically interested uh, in uh, uh, um, analysis of data that bring to decisions or try to understand how we take decisions. Um, in particular, I'm interested in the analysis of brain imaging data. So how our brain functions, uh, the different connections that get formed to the brain, and basically what we think uh, when we see uh, or do some task, uh, with some pictures when we, when we do some task, and eventually how these brain connections are going to inform what we decide to do. For example, uh, if we decide uh, to, uh, let's say, um, get uh, a coffee or something, right, uh, to wake up in the morning, what is uh, uh, that it is, uh, brings us uh, to, to that, or instead, uh, um, you know, more uh, importantly, perhaps in certain contexts, right, economic decisions, right? Also, it is important to understand brain imaging features to relate uh, uh, with diseases, right, that are, um, um, or how we cope, actually, with some stressful situations. So, all of this is of interest to me, and uh, related to this, I'm interested uh, with uh, in trials. Uh, we are all familiar right now uh, after the pandemic with clinical trial design and how that is important. Again, we have to take the, uh, some decisions about uh, the uh, effectiveness of uh, uh, treatments. And uh, um, Similarly, uh, we have to take decisions, doctors have to take decisions about uh, uh, treatments itself, uh, what is the best treatment for a, for a patient. So this is, a, this is a all part, let's say, of the decision theoretical approach that I like to bring in, um, in my research, uh, which is often focused in biostatistics. But at the beginning, when I was a college student, I was not a statistician, I was actually a, 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 um, a major in economics. Uh, and uh, um, then I took a PhD in statistics because I thought that economic decisions really uh, should uh, be informed by data. And uh, this is what I bring also when I teach, typically in my classes. So in this, uh, um, at the GEO Institute, I will uh, be teaching a fundamental class on probability and statistics for AI and data science. Uh, during this class, uh, I plan to cover foundational uh, arguments and traditional topics in uh, statistics and probability, uh, what is a random variable, the notion of probability distribution, and in general going uh, toward the uh, um, general topic of how to make inference, indeed how to make decisions that are informed from data. In all of my uh, classes, I typically base uh, uh, my class is on a strong theoretical uh, support background, but at the same time with applied uh, problems. Um, and typically what I use uh, in my uh, examples, uh, applied 
uh, if you want, uh, uh, case studies are examples from economics, finance, biostatistics, which is, uh, uh, of course, related also with, with the type of work that I do. Also, uh, I also like to have uh, uh, many examples on sports statistics because I think that anybody, every, all of us can relate to sports or in, in different ways. So I'm looking forward to be part of this adventure and I hope to bring in my expertise in statistics and uh, uh, help uh, students to appreciate the opportunity that are uh, open to them in these fields. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Dr. Michele. I think uh, we probably now turn the discussion uh, a little bit towards uh, the career opportunities or, or be even before that, probably what the potential of the artificial intelligence and data science, science industry has. And I think, you know, I, um, I think Dr. Kumar keeps saying this and he repeats this, uh, you know, uh, quote from Sundar Pichai where he says that, you know, AI is the next, it's probably the most important thing, yeah, probably even, even more important than electricity or fire. And um, that's a huge statement to make and probably that talks about um, what this industry has to offer and what the future of uh, this industry is. Uh, maybe, you know, we can we can take like a couple of minutes uh, where we can, you know, probably from what, what, what do you think um, that the future of this industry is? And you probably have seen like the evolution of this industry. So if you'd like to comment on that, we can probably um, start with Dr. Larry and then we can move to others. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, there's really two, there's always been two, I think, uh, threads in AI that have pushed it forward. One is the, the, uh, the genuine value that intelligent machines will bring in the world in helping us make decisions and helping us to understand, uh, uh, to operate at scale, at the scales that we're now operating at, which are often beyond human capabilities. Um, and I think that's one of the, one of the things that, that really pushes us forward, how to, uh, even trivial examples, you know, I mean, managing your email, which everybody, I'm sure many of the people on this call today can, can relate to the problem of managing their email, which somehow seems to be a problem that remains unsolved, unless you have enough money to have a really smart assistant who understands you and your needs very well, um, and is probably overqualified for that job. So that's a good example of the kind of thing that remains unsolved, that we that would be of genuine value to people in the world, as, as trivial and, and, and silly as it may seem, it wastes a lot of time and that time could be used for other things. You know, the other strand of AI that's always been there is the hope that AI will help us understand what it means to be a human being and to understand the human mind, that understanding how to make computers intelligent will help us to understand what makes us intelligent. And both the similarities and the differences between human and artificial intelligence, I think are of great interest um, as we move forward. So I think those are the two maybe uh, strands that drive the field. Maybe those sounded somewhat less practical than the, than the, the big picture um, that I think Shailesh is, can offer here. Um, so I'll hand it over to him to make that, those points. Thank you, Dr. Shailesh, you're on mute. Yeah, you would like to add that. So uh, thanks, Harry, for that. I think uh, in, in my view, I have seen the evolution of the AI in, in three different ways. One is our understanding of how the mind works has evolved, right? And what we have learned from neuroscience, from psychology and all of that, uh, I think all that is now becoming algorithmic and functional in the AI algorithms, right? So as our understanding of how the mind works and how we think, how we learn, how we create, how we solve problems, what is, how do we reason about things, all of that, the philosophical aspect of that becoming productionized into algorithms is one kind of an evolution I have seen. Second, I have seen the uh, sort of the diversification of use cases. It has become a horizontal. It started with search engine and then people realize I can use it in manufacturing, in agriculture, in retail, in healthcare, in you know, uh, media, marketing, everywhere. So it is now becoming a horizontal more and more and every industry is adopting it. And we are all still trying to figure out if there is a common template to adopt it. And once that is also evolving, um, I think the, the use cases is becoming more and more diverse, more and more path breaking, whether you talk about what NASA is doing with, uh, with AI versus what Tesla is doing versus what, uh, you know, healthcare is doing versus what Netflix is doing, right? Everybody's doing it. So you cannot say that this industry is never going to use AI. It is not possible. 
Now we are convinced that if 200 of them are doing it, then all 2000 will do it eventually. So that is the second big thing. The third thing that has happened in the last 20 years is that we know now how to bring it to people. It is not just sitting in the labs. It is not a research topic anymore. We know how to build scalable systems that can benefit people. And this is possible because we have cloud, we have connectivity, we have devices, we have the ability to build apps, we have the ability to deliver content and decisions and notifications and alerts and everything, right? So these three things coming together, our improved understanding of the brain, our ability to uh, you know, connect the use cases to these algorithms and our ability to deliver AI to individuals, organizations, and society and government at large. I think because of these three things, we are at a very, very interesting time in the, in the world of AI. And uh, that's why we keep saying we are very upbeat about the next 20 years. And uh, the last 20 years have been great. And we now know how to crawl. So there's a long way to go, but we now know how to crawl. I think I think that was that was a really nice way to put it, sir. Um, I think uh, we can now move to Dr. Michele because I think the perspective of him, like when he was talking about economics and then statistics and how you know he he realized the importance of data and uh, you know informed decisions. So, uh, what do you think, Dr. Michele, about about that? Uh, you know, specifically the the power of uh, you know economics and stats in this particular field and how how that is going to help uh, you know this this industry to flourish yes i think uh, that uh, uh, the use of uh, data science tools uh, statistics uh, uh, computer science informatics tool informatics tools machine learning in uh, many fields today economics fin finance uh, um and uh, health in particular are all uh, uh, is going to be even more pronounced as we as we go i mean it's foundational for many of the things that we do for uh, that are done in this field so personally i've seen uh, uh, many of uh, our students here at uci um, getting uh, uh, jobs outside uh, in industry, in big industries, before even they finish their studies, right? Um, getting connected and getting contacts. This is uh, definitely a, a, a proof to me that uh, there is a need for the type of tools that we provide. Um, I believe uh, 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 in the pandemics itself uh, that we've been uh, through in the past two years has shown that many decisions at many different levels are informed by data. Um, it happens uh, for uh, policy uh, decisions, it happens for health decisions, uh, but it happens also for economics, uh, um, finance, right? All of these fields really rely on uh, having um, scientists, data scientists, that know what to do, that can provide uh, a good analysis of the data that are collected. And they can, can guide uh, the decision makers to uh, take proper decisions eventually. So I think uh, um, this type of courses are fundamental. And uh, um, in my uh, classes, and I think all over uh, the spectrum of the classes taught at, uh, at the Institute, I believe uh, this will be a, a strong component of analysis um, uh, using uh, programming languages uh, um, that uh, will uh, uh, help students to um, be able to uh, do analysis that can be also communicated easily, uh, visualized to uh, decision makers. Thank you for that, uh, Dr. Melek Michele. Uh, Dr. Divya Khand, would you like to talk a little bit about um, the potential of this industry and you must have also seen the evolution of, of this industry and um, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, so I I also can agree with, uh, uh, you know, that there is huge potential and we are still, we are just starting. I mean, we are just starting out. And as uh, Dr. Shalesh has already pointed out, that much of the kind of early success that we have had in the last decade or so has been in the context of these verticals where, you know, where there was already large amount of data and, and we were able to, to make advances. So, so for example, you know, the privileged companies that are data rich, like the Googles of the world, 
they they were they are able to leverage from it but i think what's what what as he aptly points out what's going to happen is i think it is it is increasingly going to be the case that we are going to apply this more in a horizontal sense that it is the 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 techniques that we are going tools and techniques and the solutions that we are going to be kind of learning from are going to be applicable in a variety of contexts and i think it is already happening and it's especially happening from a research point of view for example you know you know operating systems researchers are now looking at kind of advanced ai and machine learning techniques to be able to manage large scale infrastructure so what happens is once once the scale of the of the system kind of ex exceeds a certain size you know the making decisions based on based on algorithm you know based on heuristics doesn't doesn't work anymore and you really need a much more kind of more more guided solutions and i think ai's and, and machine learning is playing a large role same thing is true for 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 in the in the context of databases so i i think there is there is just tremendous potential and and i i think what's going to happen at the geo institute is not that you're going to become an expert in in one of these one of these areas but we are going to provide you the necessary breadth and depth so that you can go and participate in the in the in the revolution that is going to be taking place in the next 20 years as dr shalish has been talking about so so with that i'm going to stop so. um <clears throat> thank you thank you for that dr divikant um i think we spoke about the cost the potential that this industry has to offer now we were probably can can deviate more with respect to after completing this program what are the different types of career opportunities you know that the students can expect you know now i think we have established the fact that the industry has immense potential but i think uh, if we can talk more a little bit about the kind of uh different job roles or different industries or sectors that the that the students will will have opportunities to work in and i think you know of course geo institute probably has other career tracks such as research and um <coughs> entrepreneurial as well so i think um dr shailesh we can start uh, with you on this and then we can we can move yeah so basically you know we are all different in the way we want to contribute to the society or to explore ourselves right so there, there are some of us who want to advance the state of the art and we love you know uh, creating new frameworks new thought processes new algorithms so for that group of people you know this course will offer opportunities to do research with some of the world class faculties and advance the state of the art publish some papers move into a phd program and prepare yourself for that uh, second is some of us are very hands on we want to solve some very interesting problem uh and we love these kind of challenges so the, for them the program offers an opportunity to work in industry do a very industry scale you know very large data real world problem kind of a problem statement and become very confident and competent and at building and deploying complex models with very large data set and become a industrial scale data scientist so that is the second outcome and there are a lot of industries already lining up to geo institute and saying when are your students graduating we want some right so that is the second group and the third group is some of us are not either into research or into building individual models but we want to take up a solution like say, let's say somebody wants to say i want to build a, a a companion for a blind person so that computer vision can explain and and speak to him and say what is happening in the world let's say that's what you want to do now for that you need multiple skills you need computer vision speech uh you know a text to speech and all of that and, and multiple such skills you need and maybe some hardware iot and all of that so then you become a solution person and you create solutions and that become a startup and then we help you incubate your startup and you can become an entrepreneur so we have all three options open depending on who you are you can choose to be uh, going to any of the streams but the the fourth thing i would say is whatever domain you bring with yourself right so a lot of people ask i am in this domain can i do this i am in this domain can i do this and the answer is almost always yes unless you are a barber or something right so so if you are into a domain like retail manufacturing insurance uh, you know chartered accountant any domain what what this does it adds a beautiful icing on the cake it makes you much better at that domain domain is difficult 
data science is comparatively not easy, but at least it's a different skill, but it's very easy to, you know, if you combine the two, you become 10 X more than what you are today in whatever domain you are. So just keep that in mind. It's a catalyst that you are adding to your professional career, your skill set, and this catalyst will take you many, many folds ahead than what you would not do without it. Right. With, uh, like just being an IT person, you can only reach so much. Just being a product manager, you can reach so much. Just being an SME, you can reach so much. But if you add this catalyst on top of all the three, you can do so much more. So that is the promise. And therefore, you will see the same thing in the kind of job offers you get, the kind of salaries you get, the kind of opportunities you get in your own vertical, right? So vertical doesn't change, but your, uh, you know, you go up in the, in the, there's a sudden nonlinear shift in your profile after this. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Dr. Shailesh. Uh, Dr. Larry, would you like to add anything to that and, and talk about the different career opportunities? Just very quickly, look, I mean, uh, as everybody's mentioned, we, we, are, we know from our own experience in teaching in the United States here, uh, and Shailesh, on the other hand, trying to recruit people for Alliance Geo, he understands the difficulty of finding people, and we understand the avidity with which uh, 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 businesses of all kinds, tech companies, but also uh, uh, companies in a variety of important verticals, finance and banking or healthcare, what have you, uh, look for students who come out of our program. So there's not going to be a shortage of jobs. I think the, the question in front of all of you will be how to make the, the maximal impact with your life and what you can do to sort of, uh, to you know, to become the person that you should be and, and to maximize the skills that you really find are passionate about, about applying to the world. And so uh, if those are entrepreneurship, I think we will have courses and people to help you on your way if it's to become a great data scientist or a great data modeler, again, the same thing, the Geo Institute will have um, uh, placement staff and, and connections with industry to help make that possible. Um, similarly, if you wanna become a great AI engineer, and, and to be clear about this, one of the purposes of the, of the projects courses that come later in the curriculum will be, uh, because those courses will be in part connected with real problems from industry to connect you directly with people whose, pro whose problems you'll be working on, um, it's to give you a leg up on potentially taking those kinds of jobs. But, but finally, of course, third of all, if you want to become a thought leader, if you want to become a, if you want to go on and get a PhD or do further, uh, further education, uh, the faculty that we're bringing, as you can see, are people who have um, uh, uh, wide ranging capabilities and uh, are well known in, um, in the academic world as, uh, as thought leaders and people who do great research. And so, I think their mentorship and just by example, first of all, but the connections that you'll have with them, if that's the direction you want to go, will also be extremely valuable. So, um, um, and I think it's going to be fun too, let's be clear. I mean, it's just one of the great things about, about uh, being in this kind of job is it is a lot of fun. It's not, it's, it's, uh, it's greatly satisfying to see the solutions work and it's a lot of fun to build them too. So um, hope you'll enjoy that, uh, that part of the process as well. Thank you, Dr. Larry. Um, Dr. Agarwal, would you like to add something to this? So I think I think the question I, I <clears throat> I'm, I'm sensing is is what kind of opportunities exist for the people who graduate from here, and I think I think uh, one of the principles that I have applied personally, and I think I all, always tell my students is that one should focus on not not on the basis, you should not guide yourself in terms of the job prospects. One should guide it based on what you like and you know what you want to learn and what you want to see, this, the, what kind of solutions you want to create for the world. And I think if as long as, you know, and, and, and a sort of this area, you know, computer science and AI and ML and data, AI and data science provides you a, huge opportunities and you can choose your own niche and you can you can participate in a variety of ways and i think that's that's the thing that should drive drive you i think you should be driven not from getting the next job but driven from what kind of problems that you want to solve for the world i think that's once once you do that i think you are you're you're not going to be 
worried about finding the next job. I think you will you will be the most desirable. I mean, you will be able to 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 walk into places and be able to create solutions that that people would like. And I think that's 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 how I would drive. You know, I would I would be thinking about. So, so I think that's my advice to all the young people out there. By the way, there are some questions. I think one of the questions uh, talks about <clears throat> about you know I'm 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 so I'm this old and and can I can I still yeah. participate in the program? And I do want to mention I think learning learning is not age restricted. I think uh, especially in the technology and the, in our in our field things change so rapidly every few years that we all have to be remain a continuous learner so 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 they so they the respond to that individual uh, i mean you know i would say is that you know i think if you have the time for for me to be able to to devote the next six months or one year whatever the, the extent is uh, and and you are you are motivated to learn new things then I think let let age not be the barrier for you. I think that is that is that is not that has never happened. I have had I have had students who have you know uh, actually and not one or you know not not in sole instance in multiple cases I've had students who have come back come after a full career and come back and done the PhD with me and then they they went on and then did did a a second stunt if I may. As as a, as a successful successful career, so so you know, I I really I really want to let people know is that the age is no barrier. I think that's that's the, that let that <clears throat> not be a barrier. Thank you, thank you for that, Doctor Vikanta. Oh, Doctor Mikhail, yeah, Doctor Mikhail, would you like to add something? Um, I think that most uh, have been said already. I mean, I think this is uh, a um, fast developing, exciting uh, uh, type of uh, uh, things to work uh, with. And I think that there are going to be, I mean, many plentiful opportunities for people to find their way um, either as a data scientist uh, um, or as entrepreneurs uh, or uh, in different roles, right? Uh, either, uh, you know, uh, in uh, uh, companies, uh, uh, big companies, small companies. I think that eventually the entire world, as we've seen, is going to toward a model where data, where decisions are driven by data and there is a need for people that can uh, lead and guide those decisions. Um, I seen a, 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 in a question uh, that uh, there is a, some sort of uh, uh, a confusion or perplexity about uh, the uh, different categories and words that we use, statistics, econometrics, data science. So what are the differences between uh, those? I think that uh, uh, those uh, are words, those are fields that uh, are somehow interconnected, but in some ways uh, they have some specificity. Data science, I see it as a broad category that involves the, con uh, the contribution of uh, many different fields, statistics, computer science, uh, um, business, economics. Uh, 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 so it's uh, like, it's a, a broad term that encompasses many different uh, uh, um, um, subfields. Statistics uh, typically refers to a more uh, uh, foundational, theoretical, uh, mathematically based approach to uh, data uh, analysis. Econometrics is typically applied to economics, but there is a lot of uh, interdisciplinary uh, context in all of these fields. So I would not be so um, focused on single words. Uh, I think that it is important to describe and build the tools that uh, can be applied into uh, the particular jobs that one uh, career that one eventually takes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Michele. And I think uh, now we can probably take some uh, questions. I think there are some more questions um, that we can probably take up. I'm going to read out a few. And I think there are a few um, uh, which are directed towards the eligibility, you know, if they're eligible to apply for this program or not. And I'll take the first question, which says that I have around 14 years of experience in Oracle database administration and SRE development. How can I increase my chance in getting selected? I'm looking for a deep hands-on approach. 
Dr. Shailesh, would you like to take that? Yeah. Yeah. See, because you're already in DevOps, you're already an SRE, you're already a database administrator. I think you're already ready with one of the three wings of data science, which is the, you know, the computing, the hands-on, the engineering part of it, I think. So that part is taken care of. And I think, um, yeah, definitely, I would say you can bring that skill set to the team, to the project that you work on, and you can develop the other two skill sets, which is the mathematical and algorithmic thinking, um, as well as the, you know, the, the, uh, the domain knowledge thinking and how do you bring all those three things together, right? So I think you already have one of the skills. So I would highly encourage you to apply. Just make sure that, uh, you know, you have enough mathematical background um, because 14 years is a long time to may have forgotten some things, but just brush up on your basic maths uh, while you prepare for GRE. We are going to give very strong foundation courses. Uh, Dr. Gindani is going to take care of some of that. So uh, once that is brushed up and you already have good programming and engineering skills, uh, so I think you you stand a very good chance. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for that, Dr. Shailesh. Dr. Lai, would you like to add something to that? Yeah. No, I think that I think that was pretty comprehensive from everybody, and uh, I think absolutely, please do apply and uh, think about the. Uh, uh, you know how the base that you already have in your life can help you take what you would learn here and 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 uh, kind of move to the next level of what you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the next question is also related to eligibility, but but here the the experience is more towards the marketing side. Uh, the question is that I'm into digital marketing for twenty years now, and this is moving to automation with privacy built in. How can this course help me get those skills and be? Um, be knowledgeable about the automation and privacy building. Again, Dr. Kumar, would you like to start? Yeah, see, we have a digital marketing uh, course. I would suggest that you consider that as opposed to the data science course. Um, that is one thing. Second thing, because you are 20 years into the industry, uh, the, the way we teach to um, somebody who has been, you know, two years in the industry versus 20 year in the industry is very different, right? So we are going to launch an executive program for senior people who have been in the industry for a while. So I think consider that program instead of the PGP, you know, program that we are launching now. Third is, um, yeah, I think third is we are going to cover topics like ethics in AI and responsible AI, where we will cover a lot of privacy, bias, fairness, all of that stuff. So that will be covered in both the executive program as well as the uh, this PGP program. So those aspects, if you're especially interested in those aspects, they will be covered definitely. But I would suggest three things. Consider the DMMC program, the parallel program that we are launching. Consider the executive education version of that program. And uh, definitely you're going to learn about privacy and other things there. In either yeah. Yeah, let me, Thank let, you. Let me, yeah. Maybe I can... Uh, say a couple of things here about what are we expecting in terms of prerequisites. You know, as Shailesh mentioned, this is this is really a hands-on program aimed for aimed at people who are still at the building phases of their career, so to speak, still, you know, still involved directly in the technical work of 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 uh, doing AI and data science. And so um, we don't you don't have to be a computer science major to come into this program uh, or a math major or a statistics major. Um, but you do have to have some mathematical sophistication and background and a little bit of programming. I mean, we're, we're, we're looking for people who have been STEM majors, you know, science, technology, and engineering majors, but uh, potentially also social science majors, quantitative social science majors, such as economics, or um, even things like political science or sociology if sufficiently kind of quantitative in their, in their in outlook and training. Um, it would be a good idea to know a little bit about how to program. We don't expect you to be a great programmer. Some of you, we hope, will be great programmers because that's something that is important to become um, a really strong AI developer or engineer. You know, strong programming skills are necessary. Uh, to be a great data scientist, I think it's more about being a great data modeler. You do, you do have to have some programming skills, but it's maybe not quite as critical in that, in that side of the house as it is on the, on the AI engineering side of the house. So I would say, a little bit of programming skills and some mathematical sophistication up to and including, for example, linear algebra would be a really good idea. Uh, I think the rest 
uh, will be able to teach you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Dr. Larry. I think Dr. Michele was talking about a question where, where you know, that there was a difference. People were asking the difference between what data science and statistics and uh, other uh, different terminologies. And I think there's another question uh, related to that, which says, what's the difference between data science and ML engineering or machine learning engineering is? Um, Dr. Divyakant, would you like to add something to that question? So I'm going to defer to Shailesh to answer that question. Yeah, yeah. let me take that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, these fields are kind of uh, like in a Venn diagram, no, quite overlapping, right? There are quite a few skill sets that are common, but if we start to nitpick, right? What is AI versus data science versus machine learning versus deep learning versus pattern recognition? Uh, you know, there are minor differences, right? So ML engineer, if you think of it, is a good modeler who knows how to go deep into data, into domain knowledge, uh, find some best features and build a model, deploy a model. That is an ML engineer. But data science is a super set of that in some sense. And, and I would say data scientist is also looking at, uh, you know, what business problem we are solving, what is the engineering infrastructure we are constrained with, what are the business um, constraints like, you know, do you want to make real-time decisions or offline decisions? Uh, you know, what is, uh, how do you, uh, what are the metrics that, uh, you know, all the way from not only machine learning metrics, but also business metrics, not only build a prediction model, but also build an optimization model to complete the journey, right? Predict what will happen and then decide what to do next. Together is data science. So to me, data science is a layer of decisions on top of a layer of predictions. Machine learning is only building prediction models. Data science is building also on top of that decision models, right? So converting data to predictions is machine learning. Converting data to decisions is data science. And that's my simple definition. And if you ask this question to 10 people, they'll have a different answer uh, because the, the, you know, we're still you know, at the crawl stage, like I said, right? We don't know what we're doing. We have come up with these terminologies. Data mining is another terminology. And every every now and then a new term will come. So uh, be ready for that. Uh, but, uh, you know, we can always nitpick and argue about this. But they're all the same in, in some sense. What I want to think of it as, you know, if you've seen the movie Rambo, right? Uh, a, a commando kind of a person who knows how to do everything all the way from how to deal with large scale data, how to engineer the solution, how to talk to a business person, how to talk to an end customer, how to talk to a senior executive, how to you know, create a startup around it, uh, how to advance the state of the art. Think of all these six skills put into one person. What would you call that person, right? So for me, that is a data science commando. So think of it that way. And, and that's what we are really ideally trying to do. We are one man army who can do everything. And uh, you will bring three of those seven skills. We'll add the other four. That's how we think about this. We'll have to, we'll have to get bandana, Geo Institute bandanas made up for everybody. So we can, you know, kind of put them on when we head out into the field for our uh, operations. Uh, you know, as Shaila said, there are a lot of, look, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, complexity under the sun here. There's a lot of, sort of earlier in the pipeline stuff that Shailesh kind of, I think, uh, uh, alluded to, but didn't go into, but the whole question of data preparation, data gathering, storage, and so forth, some of the things that Divya Khan will be talking about in his course um, uh, that, are, that are preparatory to uh, building an AI, uh, a machine learning model that um, is really one of the provinces of data science, for example. So there, it, it, it is a broader field, data science itself, than just machine learning for sure. And there's a lot of aspects of it that are systems aspects and database aspects, as well as AI aspects. I think on the AI side, in addition to the to kind of um, uh, domain expertise, as, as we've all mentioned in healthcare or, or in um, retail or, or any other area that you are going to focus on, there are kind of flavors of AI applications, uh, natural language processing or computer vision or um, uh, decision making, I think, would be three kind of kind of separate ones, or interactive systems, um, or uh, AI systems based on um, uh, sensor data. So all of these kinds of uh, there's kind of a level of expertise associated with how to 
you know, how to build AI systems that can use natural language or that can see the world in some way or can make decisions in some way. So there's, there, there's a whole other direction there as well. Um, uh, people who do all these kinds of things will be part of the faculty at Geo Institute. So you're going to have a chance to sort of, you know, as Divya Kant mentioned, uh, find the thing that speaks to you, you know, and, and go in that direction uh, because he's absolutely right. I mean, the way to make, uh, you know, there's a, there's a kind of a famous dictum, follow your feet. You should do what comes naturally to you, and that's how you will add value in the world um, and also enjoy your life. So I think that's, that's absolutely a correct decision-making model. Thank you. I think, uh, you know, that question actually, it started with, and I think uh, I think I myself have more clarity on, on it, uh, you know, and just probably can talk about uh, from others as well. Um, I think a few more questions, uh, again, related to eligibility. And actually, this one seems very direct. Uh, it says that I'm a little bit confused uh, regarding the enrollment of the program. Geo Institute is going to let students enter into a new era through this flagship program. And by launching this program, the Institute is laying a foundation for the future of our society. But I've previously had bad experience in learning programming language and I'm skeptical about subscribing for this course. So my question is that should I just go for it uh, because we have such uh, highly qualified professionals in the Institute? Dr. Shelley, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so see, uh, yeah, go ahead, Larry. Uh, I think, see, the program, and see, the way, if it was a program for producing software engineers, then you would have to have a very high standard of programming. But data science is not, you know, it's probably 20% programming. It's a lot many things other than that, right? Understanding business, understanding data, using tools. Now the tools can be very menu driven, not necessarily program driven, but there are some tools that require programming, right? Like if you want to do big data tasks and write a program and we'll help you learn that. And uh, there is nothing that we cannot learn, right? If we just apply ourselves. So don't worry about the, the little thing that you think that you are not able to do because it may come in the way. Programming is a very small part of data science. Um, and, you know, like I said, you can either become a solution guy or write a paper research. You don't have to be a programming guy to become a full stack data scientist. So, so I think don't give up on the idea just because of that. Uh, we will look at you holistically. We will uh, not say that you don't know programming, so you cannot join because a lot of people know a lot of other skills, like they can understand business. They have a lot of design thinking skills. They can put solutions together. They have a lot of creative ideas around how to solve the problems. They just need the right tools. The tools need not be of the nature of programming. The tools can be work with another guy who is good at programming and work together to solve a problem. You are a solution person. The other person is an engineering person. Work together to solve this. No single person will have all the skills we will ever need, uh, although that's the end goal. But don't worry about it. If you bring other skills to the table, you should definitely consider joining this program. Yeah, yeah I think I want to say, and this relates to the previous question as well. I mean, our program is a program in AI and data science, and that's because both there's tremendous similarity between these fields and there are some differences as well, or some, actually both of them are multiple fields and they have, and they share some subfields and different some others. So the thing I want to say there is that uh, we did that for a reason. If you look around the world right now, you'll see master's programs in data science. They're quite ubiquitous at this point. You'll see some master's programs in AI. They are less uh, common, uh, but very, uh, this I think is actually a unique program in being AI and data science. And one of the reasons we did that is that we want the breadth of students to come in with different kinds of backgrounds and different kinds of capabilities to learn how to work together. There will be some, if you're going to go into become an AI developer, then a good then being a good software engineer is a must. But as Silas mentioned, to be a great data scientist, it's, you have to have a bit of programming, but it's not going to be the main core of what you're doing. And so I think that, uh, I, I think he's right, persist. Thank you um, for, that, for that, Dr. Larry and Dr. Sharish. I think uh, we can have the last question uh, for today's session, which is again related to eligibility. And it says that I have industry experience of four years and currently doing freelance in the field of data visualization, especially SQL and Power, Power BI. Could you please suggest if I'm eligible and how do I prepare for the Geo Institute entrance test? 
Well, this is a, certainly the kind of person that we're, I think, interested in for the program. Um, you're already doing the kinds of work that that's very pertinent to what it, uh, what people in data science do. Um, I think, as we mentioned, um, uh, making sure that your your math background, brushing up on your math background, uh, uh, hopefully some linear algebra would be good, um, and um, and maybe uh, and this is relevant to the previous person as well. I think we're going to recommend some courses, online courses, perhaps for brushing up on your programming skills as well. We're, we're developing some programming skills. Um, I'm happy to say that, by the way, the we will be having a data visualization course that we'll be teaching in the, I believe, second quarter of the program or the, uh, either the, I'm not sure whether it's the first half of the second quarter or the second half of the second quarter. And that will be taught by Dr. Vidya Settler. She is the director of research at Tableau which is the premier data visualization company in the world, uh, which is now part of Salesforce. So very excited to have her come to teach with us. And um, um, uh, again, I think uh, it's a great fit. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I think uh, that's it for uh, today's session. Um, thank you again for joining us. Uh, thank you, Dr. Divyakar, Dr. Michele, Dr. Kumar, Dr. Burma for, for joining us for today's session. And uh, quickly, just to summarize this, I'd like to just um, point, a, point a few things for our audience uh, that uh, the last day to apply for this program is May 20th. Uh, so we encourage you to, to th those who have already uh, started the application to complete it at the earliest and those who haven't uh, to start their applications. Uh, the fees for this particular program is INR 6 lakhs, which is inclusive of the tuition fee, the residence and the related expenses. Um, the eligibility criteria for uh, the AINDS program is uh, an undergraduate degree, a three-year undergraduate degree uh, with a, a minimum of 18 years of work experience as in July 1st, 2022. For any further information, please visit our website, which you can access at www.geoinstitute.edu.in and also follow us on our social media handles to stay updated from the latest from Geo Institute. Thank you once again, and from wherever you are, have a good day, good evening. Um, thank you again. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rito, and thank you again, Divya Khan and Michele. Good to see thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. bye, -bye. See you soon.